Excellent. Okay. Well, it's nine o'clock sharp and people are rolling into our session today on the secrets of uh, hiring movers, which is fantastic. So first off, want to welcome everyone to our session today. I am joined by the fantastic Winston Davis. He is the CEO of Move Up Consulting, and we're here today to talk about the secrets to hiring movers. We've got a fantastic session planned. I know it's something dear, near and dear to a lot of our hearts in the industry, and Winston is really an expert here. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges with hiring, and Winston's going to share his expertise, and we're going to have ample time for Q&A. So go ahead and keep asking questions. You can start right now in the chat panel and ask any questions questions that you might have for us um, or for Winston on this topic. So um, to kick things off, Winston, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into the moving industry. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for bringing me on. This is so cool um, and so good that you guys do these uh, master classes because information is, is so valuable. And I think if people leverage it more than, um, you know, that coupled with action, you know, you, you can do anything. So yeah, my background, I got started uh, in the industry when I was 20. Um, I started working with a franchise mover, um, uh, college hunks, hauling junk and moving uh, up in the Northern Virginia area. And I started off, uh, actually applied through Indeed. Uh, I was uh, working, uh, I was working in the fitness industry and I was working as a front desk employee. Um, I was also in college taking classes. So I was just in that stage of life and um saw an ad for for like a, a truck captain job so i was like i don't know i was an athletic guy so i saw the word captain in it so i was like cool i'll apply to that that seems up my alley and um obviously you know i'm kind of an extroverted individual anyway so i was like yeah cool i'll go do that and uh little did i know anything about that it was a moving job or what the heck i was getting into and i go in in a suit and tie for the job interview and the the owner of the franchise he goes yeah, um, I really need a sales rep. I think that's what you're going to fit better for. So then um, I ended up getting into sales. So I did moving sales for about three years um, in their program and their system to start off just as like a base on-site estimator, moved into a sales manager role and then director of marketing and sales. And uh, through that, I did hiring, recruiting, I did um, claims handling. So I kind of wore a lot of different hats. Um, uh, obviously, if you work in the office, you have some operational responsibilities too. So, you know, getting a phone call at 6 p.m. on a Saturday and guys saying, hey, we we need help <laughs> big time. Right. And, you know, putting putting my my shirt on and, and my tennis shoes and going out there and getting on a on a job. So um I've been there. And uh then right when COVID started, that's when I transitioned, decided I, I wanted to um, you know, start something entrepreneurial. And that's when I started to move up. And uh, we initially started to do just one-on-one -on -one in group uh, private coaching with moving business owners. And then once, once we got going and we started having clients, everybody was coming to us with this problem of, I would love to grow my business, but I don't have any people. And it was just this huge enigma for everybody. And so I was like, well, um, you know, I, I've read enough books and I've listened to enough successful people to know that wherever you can find a problem, is a good place to go and serve and, and start a business. And so uh, we pivoted and, and now we're, we're offering services along recruiting, hiring, and um, helping out moving business owners with that area of their business. Awesome. Awesome. What a great story. And, and definitely your expertise in the industry, I think, and wearing different hats really helps you um, know how to help. And I know you've helped a number of um, number of movers, uh, moving company owners, fine movers. So that's really great to hear. So let's, um, let's kick it off with some yeah. questions. Uh, yeah. First and foremost, one that has come up is which platforms and channels should you use to find movers? Yeah, it, people ask me all this all the time. And my first answer is all of them and everywhere. Uh, but if we want to get a little more rifled in, um, kind of ranking them in order, Indeed is going to be the best one as far as just an online presence standpoint. They have over 200 million resumes in their database. Um, and that's where that they're kind of the leading kingpin with, okay. with job boards. So Indeed, ZipRecruiter to me is number two, but I think movers don't leverage it. And I think it's something that because you have to pay to be on there, 
Um, it, people are a little bit hesitant to that, but they have about 31, 32 million resumes in their database and they have some really neat features. So ZipRecruiter is strong. And then following that Facebook, uh, with job posting there and then Craigslist for Got online, it. those are your four major areas. And under that, you want to think about maybe like some niche job boards or local job boards. Um, and some of that you have to dig a little bit and look what's in your market, what's in your area. So that's online. And then outside of that, um, you know, I think there's some great strategies with Facebook groups. There's a mm -hmm. lot of great Facebook groups, like for local areas um, yeah. that might be uh, a lot of times they're just what's happening. Like I live in Winchester. So there's one called uh, what's happening in Winchester and it's yeah. just events and different stuff and businesses, small businesses and uh, tons of people are in those. So uh, those are good places. They have Facebook groups for jobs. Um, and so being active in that as well is strong. Got it. Those are, those are good uh, ones. So sounds like indeed is a front runner, but make sure you're also doing those other ones, Facebook, Craigslist, and ZipRecruiter. Yeah. yeah. You want to be everywhere because if you're just in one spot, um, that's like, like when I think about, um, you know, putting a job ad out, that's, you know, imagine if you were selling your house, right? Well, I don't want to just be on Zillow, obviously is to me kind of the one that's like front yeah. runner, but I don't just want to be on Zillow. I want it to be on Realtor. I want it to be on, you know, XYZ, all these other places too. Right. So, and they use that, you know, the, the listing, the MLS to get it on all those places. So that's kind of should be the mentality. Got it. And what about posting the job? Do you also recommend posting it on your own company website as oh, well? Absolutely. Yeah. Every, every business should have, even when you're starting out little itty bitty business, you should have a careers page under the about us. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were with clients, we have like a, a, a built out template with all the copyright and, and oh, you know, we can go in more depth for that. But, you know, we, we have helped clients build out, Hey, here's where all your CTA buttons should be. This is the type of uh, call to action that you want to promote. These are the benefits you want to put. You want to put benefits always at the top on like career page or your job ads, because that's why someone wants to go work at your company. So you want to put that first. So yeah, career page, um, your business page on Facebook, right? Um, now, all those different places are good. Does it mean you're going to get 30 applicants on your business page? Probably not, but it shows job seekers that you're active, that you're an active open business. Got it. A business page that has no posts and no activity, I, as a job seeker, I'm like, well, they might be out of business, right? Yeah. We want to be active. Yeah, that's, that's excellent, excellent feedback. I think that's something that everybody can benefit from here too. Uh, now a question that I think we've all had in these, how do you get candidates to show up for the Oh, interview? goodness. Oh, uh, yeah. I, that never, that no shows never, never happened, ceased. right? Yeah, this one just <laughs> never ceased. And, and I tell everybody this, this is going to, this is an ongoing uh, endeavor in your business because we're working with uh, a job market of people that, you know, yeah, there's some people that they're like superstars and maybe they're building up. They just are getting in their career. They're kind of finding, you know, a part-time job for the next year while they're in school. There's that type of guy or gal. And then there's people that, Hey, they might not had a couple mistakes in life. They might've made a couple bad choices and, and they might be a little rough around the edges. So uh, a lot of times you find some unaccountable people and, and it's hard to sift through all of that with this much time. So some strategies that we recommend that we really preach and we do in our own service. One, you have to have a multiple confirmation system. Mm -hmm. um, the mentality that the, the job seeker should be coming to us and should be confirming with us and you know all of that is really kind of, of, of an old mentality. That's, that's really bef not in today's world. Now, as the employer, we have to go to them. And it seems quite backwards because it's like, well, don't, aren't we the ones that have the job opportunity? Yeah. Like, shouldn't they be coming to us? Um, right? Right. And there's a balance of that. Um, you don't want to be begging people, but you should be confirming uh, multiple times. So you should have multiple text confirmations, one 24 hours before, one two hours before should be doing a phone call either the afternoon before or the morning of that mm -hmm. interview. And um, 
that that's a system. That's a system in the business. So that's what you're teaching either, you know, your ops manager or maybe it's an office admin that's helping you in the office with that, or maybe it's you, the owner, but you have to have a confirmation system. Um, selling the job opportunity on the phone interview. That to me is like probably the biggest one. Promote the person on why they should come. If you're yeah. bland and you're dull and this is just another thing, yeah, you're going to get two or three out of 10 people show up for something like that. Yeah. So differentiate yourself by having some gusto, like sell this thing. And, and again, there's a difference between needing someone, but then having something of value. Mm. You have something of value and you say, hey, here's why this is the best place to work. You know, this, this is why we're growing. This is where we're going. This is the type of people we have here. This is what we're about. When people start hearing that, they're like, damn, you know, I do want to work yeah. there. And so sell your opportunity. Don't sell yourself short. And um, that one to me is huge. Um, and that's kind of go a step off of this, uh, your hiring process. More times than not, you're going to, they're going to apply online or you're going to get a referral recommendation. Then you're going to do a phone interview, five to 10 minute phone screen. Then you're going to do an in-person interview. And then after that, a lot of companies kind of do some different stuff, maybe do a working interview or, you know, et cetera, first day training. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, confirmation system, good copyright um, on your ads. Uh, so that way people actually know what they're getting into. I've read yeah. so many job ads for mover, uh, mover positions, and it's just like three sentences and that's it. And it's like, well, are you hiring for a gig or a job? Yeah. And, and I think we all can elevate our game by saying, okay, this is a real job, not just a part-time thing, not just something that, well, I'm going to go try it, like make it a real job opportunity and people will take you more seriously. Um, and so I find that helps with the show rate. Got it. That's, that's an excellent point. And I think you're spot on on the market has shifted and you have to you have to stay following up with the candidates and that there's so much value that they have to feel that there's value as well in the process and taking that time to really perfect the system and the process for this can, can help a lot. And it sounds like that's something you help a lot with. Um, let's shift the focus to talking a little bit about retention. Um, how do you create a company culture that helps you to retain your crew members and drivers? Yeah, this is, for me, this is my favorite topic for everything that we do, because this is the stuff that, that to me, once you actually have someone and they've gotten hired and they've gotten started, um, which culture and retention starts in the first hour, the first yeah. minute when somebody starts, by the way, but this is to me the most exciting part because it's the people part and that's what I like. So um, there's a program that we teach, something I learned uh, years back called the Five First Program. And what that is, it's, it's a system model on your retention program. So uh, there's five steps. One is the first hour. The first mm -hmm. hour is the most critical for any new employee. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is not to, when they show up, not to just have them start off doing a bunch of paperwork or throw them into some class where they got to sit there. They don't, that's, to be honest, I know those things are important. They got to do it but that stuff sucks. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that right away. So instead, why don't you make the first hour a little more enjoyable, a little more exciting, right? You need to train these people, but why don't you show them around your warehouse? Why don't you show them the trucks and like talk about the exciting things, show them you should have like a, um, a recognition wall in your warehouse wow. or in your office that has like all your employees of the month and all your awards that you've given out because you should be an award centered, uh, environment in my opinion and so do those things first and then their first hour they're like man this place is really cool right and their energy's wow. up they're going to be more attentive they're going to be uh more eager to learn in that first hour so the first hour is huge number two is their first day you should have a five to ten minute conversation at the end of their first day always <laughs> never let that person leave without talking to them the first day is huge a lot of companies i'll find they'll be like well we had them they worked a day and then they didn't show up on the second day and I, I always say well I bet I can tell you why why would they come the first day and then not and then ghost you it's because they didn't like it they don't want to work there 
plain and simple. It's not worth to them. It's not worth their time. So um, have that conversation. Ask, ask a couple questions. Feel it out. Um, hey, what'd you really enjoy? What'd you like? Uh, what, what did you not like? And that'll help you as an employer and as a manager of people too, and help your systems get better. Number three in the first uh, five first program is the first week. So kind of the same concept from the second one, but just do it yeah. at the end of the first week. Uh, the fourth one is the first paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, think about like, Kate, think about your first job. What was your first job? Oh gosh, this is take, taking me back a little. Take it back. Yeah, I was a, a little. Oh, sorry, I was a bus boy. I was a okay. bus boy at a restaurant. Okay, I worked at a party store. You worked at a party store. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so think about when you got your first paycheck. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel? Pretty good. Felt pretty good because yeah. you earned it. Yeah. This is where almost nobody does this, and. I believe that if you do this, you set that person up for a really good first month um, because usually they're going to get paid either weekly or, or biweekly. So right. uh, delivering their first paycheck like in hand, in person, and it's even more impactful if you can do it. You're the owner and you do that yeah. with the person because they're going to respect. They're going to be like, wow, like, you know, that was really nice. I've never had that happen. Now yeah. they may have direct deposit and that's fine. Uh, you can still give them the pay stub. Um, but just yeah. hand that to them and say, Hey, I just want to let you know, you earned this. I want to tell you, you did a great job this first couple of weeks. Congratulations. We're excited for you to stay with us for, for a long time. That, yeah. that one sentence right there that can, that can hold that person, just glue them in just that much longer. Yeah. Um, so delivery of the first paycheck. And then the fifth one is the, the end of the first month or the first 30 days. Um, I teach all my clients, Hey, you should do a team meeting once a month. You should have some kind of uh, you can call it staff meeting, but a team meeting. And the very beginning of that should be recognition. And part of that is recognizing work anniversaries, but also brand new employees that just hit their first month or that's their first team meeting. So those are five first program. Um, we could go probably into more, but that's like a really good system. And mm -hmm. somebody could take that from this call right now and like implement it tomorrow. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking of implementing it in our organization too. I mean, it's so, it's so impactful, especially because it's that first impression. And then people realize, um, you get, you, you get great information at any part, um, of it. Yeah. And I'm guessing that people are much more likely to, if they're going to leave, it's going to happen in the early days, as opposed to somebody that's been there for a while. So oh, yeah. that's really, I love that. Uh, it's called the five firsts. Is that the five first? Yep. The five first program. Cause their first hour, their first day, their first week, and you're never going to have that happen again. Yeah. You know? Like they're never, even if like they, they got hired at your company, they left and then they got rehired. Well, that's not really their first week you know, yeah. that happens a lot with movers. They leave and then they come back. Um, right. And just because, you know, the, the seasonal curve too. But yeah, it's the only time that's ever going to happen. And um, I think if you hedge for it, like you build a system around it with your, your leadership team, then it can happen every single time. And then as an owner, as you're scaling the business, you're then, in the beginning, you're going to do it. Like you want to do that task. You want to have yeah. that little conversation. You want to give them that paycheck because you want to master that. And then you start teaching your, your ops manager and your office admin, your, your, your leadership team. Then your job is to teach them how to deliver that message, how to make it impactful, how to make it genuine. Because you as the owner don't want to do the day-to-day the -day forever and ever. So build a system so that way you can duplicate it and, and you know, delegate it out. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Well, we've got some questions and thank you for sharing yeah. that. Um, I want to read through them. Um, the first one is we had retention issues hiring before COVID. We pay very well for our area. We can't tell how many of our hiring issues are COVID related or how much are we just doing it wrong altogether? Any ideas? Okay. So, so Sam, let me read it. They had, they were okay before COVID. It looks like the question was they had some retention issues prior to COVID as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So retention wise, obviously we're in an industry that we do have high turnover in the mover driver position. So that we're already heightened in that area because of our industry and the type of work we do. Um, so mm -hmm. we, first and foremost, anything that's retention and culture and environment, you should double down on it. Most owners mm -hmm. are not spending enough time. So just what I recommend is usually just think, 
Like just take some time to creatively think about how can we add value to the people here? Because if you add value to them, you recognize them, which the number one reason why people leave a job is because they do not feel recognized. It's the number one reason they do not feel recognized. So everything you should do from an environment standpoint should be around that. Um, Now COVID yet COVID just adds a lot of twists and now it's just a headache with so many things to think about. Um, They're probably having a hard time with hiring one. This is true with unemployment. The government's not helping us. And that's just true. (laughs) Yeah. Don't make an excuse around it. Cannot do that. There are good people that want to work. The problem that I find is that you're probably not fast enough Mm -hmm. to the applicants. A good job candidate is not jobless very long. Why? Because they're good. They're good quality. And there's a bunch of other sharks in the ocean and somebody's going to get them. So you want to be as fast as you can. Um, there's a huge study from Harvard, Harvard Business Review about response time, lead response time, um, yeah. getting people within five minutes. And that's oh, for right. like your sales, but it's yeah. also for your hiring. No, absolutely. Makes sense. Thing. Um, so speed. And then the other thing I would say is that you, you probably just aren't getting enough numbers. And so if you're not getting enough applicants, get hyper-focused on, okay, do we actually have a, a recruiting budget? Those businesses, sure. they're not spending any money. Um, you you got to play the game. You got to invest in. Um, if you are not willing to to bet any poker chips, then don't expect to win any. And yeah. so you have to play the game. You have to do it smart. Uh, what we recommend is you want to right now in the market, you want to look for about uh, $5 to $10 per applicant. Mm-hmm. If you can get it below $5, then great. Like push, push, push. Get as many applicants yeah. as you can and store all their data in a, in a yeah. recruiting database. Um, Lewis talks about a mover database. Yes. Do you have a recruiting, have curious on that question, on the recruiting database, do you have one that you recommend that you? Well, we, we have a, we have one that we built that when oh, we, bring client on, we have a hiring CRM and it houses all the applicant data is kind oh, of like interesting. a feature in the service. Um, Got it. So uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, applicant recruiting systems, though, I think that they, they call them ATS, uh, yeah. applicant tracking systems. And so those are good to use. I mean, you just got to kind of search the market. There's sure. software is are a dime a dozen now. Um, there's so many. So um, you just got to start somewhere, try something. But it, in the beginning, there's nothing wrong with, I mean, in the beginning, beginning, start with a piece of paper and a pen. But then you go to like an Excel or a Google Sheet. Yeah. And then you upgrade to a software. Then you yeah. upgrade to a proprietary software that you get built by a developer. And that's the chronological order for systems. So this yeah. your database, your recruiting database is a system. Yeah. And that's the process you follow. Those four steps. Got it. Got it. That makes sense for the recruiting piece. And that's, that's great that you offer that. Cause I think keeping track of if someone applied, you know, we, I can imagine a world where if you've got a new office staff or something, you might not know that that person applied for a job six months ago and then they come in again. And so um, it's good to have that database of, uh, of people potentially. Ongoing electric note, uh, electronic notes on that person. Or if someone was looking for part-time work and you didn't have part-time work available before, but now you do, you can reach out to them. So there's a lot of benefits of keeping that information um, in there. Uh, another question we had on here was, what can I do to help my job posting ad stand out? Mm, yeah, so a um, couple things I think I mentioned in the beginning. When you write your, your copy, um, yes. first and foremost, go back to the title. So the title is the hook. That's what people are going to click when they're looking on the job board. They don't see your whole job posting. They see the title. Mm-hmm. So one, be thinking about, okay, uh, I don't want to just put, you can just put mover and that's good for like the organic search sure. uh, because um, it's going to get a good amount of clicks. But from a attract a, a attractive standpoint, someone may not want to apply to mover, right? So maybe be a little more creative. Like I talked about, I clicked, you know, when I got my first, uh, when I got applied to that moving company, it was truck captain, right? I was like, captain, that seems up my alley. So I, that's why yeah. I applied. Um, so be a little creative on, on job title, but then description, 
you really want to make sure that perks and benefits and the all the reasons why someone should work at your company should be at the very top. Yeah. Don't start off with some big paragraph that's about your company. To be honest, nobody cares. Make sure your company's in there, like in the middle, that's where I would put about your company. But at the top, yeah. which is what the person's going to read first, put why they should work there and make it bulleted. Don't put more than two sentences, uh, you know, back to back. Nobody wants yeah. to read uh, all that minutia. They will skim it. They will not read it. And then make sure you use, um, you know, as best as you can, certain platforms, you can do this and some you can't, but, you know, bolding, uh, um, italicizing stuff, all caps, use that, like use good copywriting skills. And if you don't know how to do that, um, Google it, use the internet, like learn yeah. how to write good copy. Um, and it doesn't cost a lot of money to learn that. And if you do, it will help, you know, even if it increases, the number of clicks you get to the job by 25%, yeah. well, 25% more clicks. Uh, you know, if you get a 25% um, application start rate yeah, like, over the course of a year, it helps. That adds up a lot. So I think you're just spot on on the writing and that's how people are going to interact with, uh, with your company first and foremost. Right. So yeah. seeing well, that information. Not yeah. And, and, and this next little part is so, so good. We do this too. And I, I just want to make sure everybody gets it. There's two little parts that are super valuable. I guess two or three that you can add to your job ad. One is you want to have a fast application link at the very top that people okay. can, they click to add and they can just click a link and then right away they can put in information. Got it. Yeah. You want to, you want to streamline the hiring process. Don't make yeah. a bunch of hoops to jump through. For, mover, for movers. Now for sure. a different position, some things are different, but uh, you don't want to have to send them to your website and then they have to go here and then they got to type in 25 different fields of information. That's way too much. Yeah. Your goal in the recruiting process is to get a name and, and a number. <laughs> That's all you need, a name and a phone number. So, um, and then at the very bottom of, of, of your ad, you should put, hey, for, for serious applicants, text us the number one reason why we should hire you and then put a phone number there and you can you can buy you can get a dedicated phone no, hiring phone number or if you want to put your own <laughs> business line there something that can get text a lot of people will do that they'll text that number but they'll never apply to the ad mm. so be creative yeah. in a way that people can show interest right and make it easy for them to apply to so true. that they they're going to lose interest if it's harder. That's great. Well, we've got time for one more question. And I we just got a question in from Justin. So thanks for this one. I'm going to read this one aloud for you. Uh, we've had quality recruits from local colleges in the past. We'd show up for the job fairs posted at the career centers. Over the last two to three years, most of the college's job posting sites are now sent to a third-party host. Do you have any experience or ideas on how to stand out in this platform? Does your system have ways of reaching this demographic of, I think, college students via social media? Yeah, so, so where the market has went for recruiting college labor, I believe, is not so much job board heavy now. It's more social media heavy. And so mm -hmm. being creative in some of this stuff is... It's just maybe a little bit out of the comfort zone for some of some moving business owners, but like this sounds crazy, but being on TikTok and I was gonna say TikTok is videos, TikTok the place to go. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of these college kids, they're just they're they don't have a LinkedIn. And then when they go to college, their college professor says you need to have a LinkedIn. So then they all get a LinkedIn. So think about mm -hmm. you know, diversifying a little bit, but the, you know, Handshake is a big job board that a lot of universities use. And that's, I don't know if that's what they're referencing, but that's that third party one. Yeah, we've and seen that it's one. it's kind of in that, it's kind of working maybe the labor job uh, employers out. And it's mm -hmm. trying to really condense down for more white collar, I would say jobs, which makes yeah. it a little hard. But um, so I think, you know, focus more on social media because that's where the people are. And, um, and then don't forget about traditional tactics, like get a bunch of yard signs for hiring, right? Get your logo, pop it on the corner. Yeah. Uh, get your company name, 
hiring movers and drivers, blank dollars to blank dollars per hour, boom, phone number. And yeah. top 20, 25, 30 of those in, in your area. Another great yeah. stat, not to, not to send us way off, but 80% of all hourly job seekers live within five miles of where they work. Oh, interesting. So your recruiting efforts, yeah, your recruiting efforts should be with five miles and in. That's 80% of what you're going to, you're probably going to have. And I think if every owner thinks about it, where's most of your people? And that's yeah. a great thing to do. Survey, like, or just look at the data. Look at where right. all your current employees live. Figure right. out what neighborhoods, what pockets. And usually when I talk to movers, they, they kind of have an idea, but then you need to take that knowledge and then take the advertising and put it together. So yeah, um, yeah. The the college college students, I think social is going to be more advantageous, but it's out of the comfort zone for maybe some of these moving. Yeah, owners. well, it's a it's so. a good question. I think it's a good demographic to target, and the social media aspect is is really interesting. And I heard a tip the other day of just going around to like um, different local businesses where you have people doing retail or customer service, or even your local like grocer, and talking about like. And bring it, bringing some uh, business cards or something that you're hiring and, and hiring hourly workers from within the community or posting it, posting it locally, um, both directly, like where the community is, where these people might be, as well as on social media is a great way to uh, get folks uh, together. Well, listen, yeah. that concludes our session. Winston, I think there was a ton of great information in here. Um, for everyone. And um, we're big fans of Move Up Consulting and what you're doing for the industry to help. Um, so for everyone that has registered, we will send out this recording. And um, Winston, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, uh, on Q has been so gracious working with us. Um, really excited about moving forward. And if any companies are thinking about their booking service, their CRM, uh, they know what they're doing. Very, very smart individuals. And the booking service is unique. That's being able to delegate that and, you know, not have to do every single little bit of the sales is very smart. So don't forget about that people. But also yeah. uh, for us, the best way to find us, uh, you can go to moveupconsulting.com and then um, uh, you can contact us uh, through email through that. Um, our phone number is listed there. Um, I'm on Facebook with a lot of moving business owners, so they can just uh, send me a direct message. That's probably 90% of everybody. They just DM me on Facebook and they say, Hey, how can you help me? So um, I'm open to that too. And uh, we get to you really fast. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Winston. And yeah. uh, to everyone who joined, uh, I think this was our most popular masterclass we've had so far. So i um, really excited uh, and take, take Winston's tips. I think we're going to implement the five first tier. I love that, especially for yeah. growing organizations um, and uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday and end of month for everybody and a holiday coming up for, for Labor Day weekend. So thanks, Winston. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate it. This is awesome. This is awesome. Bye.